iOS 26 just came out, and if you updated your phone to the latest version, there are a number of different amazing new features that are now built into your iPhone, some that you might use every single day, and some that you definitely want to change. I'll walk you through all of those, but first, hit the subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. Thanks, guys. Now, the first thing that you will notice after you've updated is liquid glass, the new design or theme on every iPhone. Now, if I take my finger and swipe down from the top left here, you'll be able to see it sort of looks like glass is sliding on top of the picture behind it. It kind of reflects and refracts light and you might like it or you might not like it. You might want to go back to how it looked before and keep in mind you can do that. Just go back to how it looked before by going directly into your settings. So tap on the settings app of your iPhone. And now from here, all we're gonna do is scroll down and under general, tap on accessibility here. Now within accessibility, all you need to do is choose this option that says display and text size. And now from here, I can tap on reduce transparency and you'll see if I swipe down from the top left again, it still has some of those effects. But if I hop out of here, all of the app logos are no longer sort of glassy and everything like that. So it does fix some of that issue. It doesn't fix every single one of those issues. Now, keep in mind, you might also notice that the app icons look a bit different. You can customize the app icons better than you have been able to in the past. And I'll show you how to customize those. Essentially, what you're gonna do is just press and hold anywhere on your phone, and you'll be able to see at the top left it pops up with edit. So just tap on that edit button. Now, it's pretty cool because they added a couple of things that weren't there before. For instance, you can tap on edit wallpaper and edit the wallpaper, the color, the gradient, the blur, everything directly on this screen. Now, keep in mind, of course, you could do that in the past, but it was never this accessible to get to. So that's a pretty cool new feature. But let's go back here, tap on edit, and I want you to go to customize that second option. What you'll notice is a brand new feature is called clear. Similar to the liquid glass theme, you can tap on clear and everything will kind of be this clear look. Of course, I've turned on that reduced transparency, so it doesn't give it that glassy look, but it does basically show every single app and every single icon in a similar kind of look and feel. I can switch it from light to dark or to auto and it will just switch back and forth automatically. Now, one of the best new features at the top right here are those two squares. If you tap on it, you'll be able to see this is kind of how it used to look with a smaller icon and the name under it. However, most of the time when people download apps, they can just recognize that's the Facebook app, that's the camera app, etc. So I prefer bigger app icons. Essentially, it makes them bigger by removing that label right under it. You can also, if you don't necessarily like that, you can just go back to the default or the dark theme, or essentially you can go to default and have it go back and forth, light to dark during the day or night. Now, that's a cool new feature. Another feature, one of the ones that I'm most excited about are screenshots on your iPhone. And this sounds simple, but they are really cool now. Now, let's head back into the settings and make sure you've turned something on on your settings. I'm gonna turn this off just so it looks normal for everybody else. Now, let's go back to the beginning of your settings. And from the beginning of your settings, you're gonna tap on general here, and then scroll down to a new feature called screen capture, tap on that. Now from here, if you have full screen previews turned off, essentially it won't give you access to the brand new features that are built into your screenshots or screen capture, as well as automatic visual lookup. So if those two are turned off, I would highly recommend turning them on just to test and see what they look like and if you prefer them. I'll show you a cool feature of them. Let's say I go into Instagram here and here's my brother Aaron. Let's say I really love those lamps behind him, but I don't know what those lamps are. Of course, I could text him, but I just wanted to be able to look up. Now, a reverse image search in Google has been a thing for a long time, but now it is built in so much easier onto your iPhone. 
because from here I can take a screenshot and now you'll be able to see at the very bottom, it says highlight to search. So I'm gonna highlight this lamp in the left here just by basically circling it with my thumb here. And now if I swipe up, it will do a Google search of that specific lamp and it does a fantastic job. It says table lamp on West Elm. So you can see ribbed glass table and I can just tap on that and basically go in and buy that exact same lamp if I wanted to. Now, they've also just redesigned this. I can hit the share button at the top right to send this as a text message. I can share it with somebody else. I can assign it to a contact. I can airdrop it as well as I can tap on the little pen icon and I can draw on that screenshot as much as I want to and then send it or save it, etc. A really cool new feature. Now let's hop out of here because there are other cool new features as well, including the camera. So tap on the camera or open up the camera on your iPhone and you'll see that it looks completely different to how it looked before. They've really simplified how it looks. You'll see at the very bottom is a photo and video. I can switch back and forth. However, it's kind of hidden, but you can take your finger and swipe over from time-lapse, slow-mo, photo, portrait, etc. So keep in mind, even though those are kind of hidden, they are down there. Now, let's say you wanted to get to further settings to customize the camera on your iPhone. Essentially, there are two different ways to do that. One is to tap on those little circles at the top, right? Or you can just tap at where it says photo at the very bottom. And you'll be able to see there I can customize and control whether the flash is on, live, timer, exposure, styles, aspect ratio, all of those different things I can customize from here. Of course, at the very bottom right, I can always just switch back and forth between the selfie camera and that rear camera. So it's redesigned. And I think they did a pretty good job redesigning it to look a lot more streamlined and customized. However, keep in mind, again, a lot of times people won't necessarily know how to customize it or control it unless they know where those settings are. Now, the next thing that we'll get into is battery. Every time you update your phone to the latest version, it automatically drains your battery life quicker. However, there's some cool settings associated with controlling your battery life. So let's get into the settings of your phone here, and let's go back to the very beginning of the settings. Now that we're at the very beginning, we're gonna tap on battery towards the bottom. And you'll notice it looks completely different. So it says 74% charge here. It does say what has used the most amount of my battery for today. I can go to battery usage, get an idea of what is using the most amount of battery. However, I would recommend going into first charging here. And on here, they used to just have optimize battery charging. So essentially, I could turn on optimized battery charging and this will predict and get an idea of when I'll wake up in the morning and when to turn on or charge it the last eight, uh, 20%. However, I would recommend switching this charge limit, turning this off and switching this charge limit to say 95 or 90%. The reason why you do this is because charging your iPhone battery the last 10% or the last 5% really reduces the longevity of your iPhone battery. So essentially you're reducing a little bit of charge upfront today, but it will help your battery last a lot longer and be able to provide good energy to you throughout the day without needing midday charges. So I would turn that on and I usually keep it at 90 or 95%. Now, you should go back here and to also tap on power mode because a cool feature is adaptive power. Essentially, what this means is if you're using your phone intensely using something else like a game or something, it might do other things like reduce some of the energy in the background on other apps or other processes that it's running in the background to really focus on what you're doing and optimize everything. So I would recommend turning that on and seeing if your battery life lasts a bit longer. It probably should. Now, after you've done that and changed those battery settings, I would also recommend going into the clock. This is a really cool feature. It's really simple, but it's surprising it took this long for Apple to do it. On here, let's say I'm in an alarm and I tap to create an alarm. I wake up at 7 a.m. every day and I sometimes hit that snooze button. 
Previously, the snooze button always defaulted to nine minutes. For, for whatever reason, you couldn't change that from nine minutes to anything else. But now I can tap on snooze duration and I can have it anywhere from one minute all the way up to 15 minutes. So let's say I want a good 15 more minutes of sleep. All I need to do is hit the check mark now. And now every time that alarm goes off, if I hit snooze 15 minutes later, it will start to ring again. Hope this helps. Hope this helps to welcome you to iOS 26 and some pros and cons and features that you might not have known about. If it did help you, hit that subscribe button down below and I'll catch you on the next one.